back in the university days, uh, porters. They yeah. held our keys. They took care of everything. They they made sure they literally checked your in and out. Exactly. You think Graham Porter is taking care of Chelsea? I think he's taking care of Chelsea, but um, his magic wand didn't work today. And ironically, is the only moon period over? I think it's over. This is the first time he losing in over eight games. And so ironic, he had to lose to the club. He abandoned them in a way. And in this, I think, horrible fashion, four goals to one, Brighton doing the job. Let's enter the game. Let's go into the game properly from a tactical point of view on the part of Chelsea. Well, I think that once again, I'll go back to the I'll episode. You, yes, your episode, episode, you spoke about the fact that they experimented a particular tactic in, tactic in Europe. It worked. They had attacking full backs who played as wing backs, mm -hmm. you understand? But you see, the truth of the matter is that Ferguson always told you that you have a template playing in, in Europe, Europe and, and then the you league. develop that's, that's another true. template playing in the, in the domestic league because, because when you play with full backs or wing backs who are attacking minded, and care little about defenses or defending, you are going to be exploited. You do not have defenders who are blessed with, with pace a, lot a lot of pigs. You have a literally an aging backline. That's the point. And for me, what we saw Brighton do to Chelsea today was an absolute horror show. It was a horror show. And you see, we've spoken much about the fact that. Um, somebody like Porter is able to read the game and is able to make adjustments in the course of the game. In fact, he talked about the fact that pra up until last season, last week, he made 14 tactical uh, switches. Really, yes. But the, the, the point is simple. The time he realized the error had been caused, the damage had been massively caused. And, and, and that's what the EPL gives you. You'll not be given or you'll not be afforded the time to settle. And we've spoken about that. You do not play a 3-5-2 formation with Sterling and Pulisic who have problems, defending. you know, defending. And like you said, you, that for a back three against these quick, hard-working full-backs and wingers of Brighton, the They'll likes of Trossard, the likes Trossard, of, you know, Danny Welbeck, uh, Danny Welbeck who yeah. are very quick and all of that. Pascal and Gross. he admitted himself that he, he got his tactics wrong and by the time he realized it was too late was there were a lot of tactical errors on the part of uh, chelsea when chelsea have the ball i think that there was a certain aspect of their game especially in the final third where they do not really know what what to do, to do. and for a team like chelsea that is blessed with so much professionals you do not expect that from chelsea i do not know what is wrong with some of the players but i felt that today Tactically, he was outsmarted by Roberto De Zervi. Um, he's actually deserving of this victory. And we've talked about Brighton. They play beautiful football, good football. Their problem has always been they finishing. Uh, finishing. Even when they lose, you clearly see that this team, at some point, if they had scored enough goals, they could have either drawn or won the game. But today, everything came together for them, whether two own goals or not. It was down to the things that Brighton, Brighton did, did so did well. Right. It was more of Brighton forcing Chelsea to make to, and best. exploiting the tactical weaknesses in the Chelsea setup. Let's zoom in on some of the Chelsea players. Raheem Sterling. Done. Finished. You know when 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 Washed. when when Pep Guardiola sold Sterling, he granted an interview where he talked about uh, when your manager not trust you and he believes that at Chelsea they believe in him and all of that. But there's a guy who is he's been so poor at Chelsea. Well, I've, I've always told people that I don't think that Raheem Sterling can get to the standards he got three four years ago. Um, just when he hit City. Um, I think that he's on a downward spiral. Forget about his age. Football is about the mileage. It's about the number of hours, man hours you have put on the clock. That's and true. if anybody remembers very well, when City won the title three years ago, Sterling was the go-to man. Was go -to the guy man. who got you the late goals, the guy who got you the most important goals. I think that um, like people say, I think that he's reached self actualization, and I struggle to still have that strongest of conviction 
that he will hit the heights that he hits at City. I think that, I mean, yes, Sterling is that player who can get you, know you what there. I think he's done. I, 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 think, I, I, well, I think he's done. I think he's done. Well, I think he's done. I, I don't think we will get to see the heights that he set for himself. I, I think that's the best years of his career have been spent at City. But, but, but you know, we, we're talking about Chelsea players. Truth be told, if you look at the Chelsea setup, they do have certain players that I feel they should let go. Someone like Pulisic, I don't think he will ever come good again. He's, he, the Pulisic at Borussia Dortmund is not the Pulisic at injuries, uh, maybe. Yeah, at at Chelsea, he's. They keep thinking that okay, let's give him time. He will come good, but it's been how many years now? It's been more than four. He spent more than four uh, four yes, seasons yes. at Chelsea. He's still not come good. I think a player like that, it's either they let him go, or he shouldn't be starting games. Uh, players like uh, Jorginho. Today, Jorginho was a pale shadow of himself. Like Jorginho should not be starting games. Um, Raheem Sterling. I think, yes, these were players that were not signed by Graham Potter. So, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to hold brief for, you know, the manager. The, the, the manager. But I think somewhere in January and next summer, Potter should go into the market, get a proper number nine, proper defensive midfielder, because you cannot trust Kante. He's, he's had issues with injuries and it's becoming a big conundrum for Chelsea. And it's clearly affected the team. Let me run by you some numbers. You clearly see how well uh, Brighton dominated the game. Brighton had, you know, uh, Brighton created three big chances. Three big chances. Three, three big chances. Chelsea created just one big chance. And the goal per match ratio, Brighton had 1.98. Chelsea had 1.94. Meaning as the game wore on, the Chelsea, there was every single possibility that Chelsea were not going to score. Yes. It was Brighton that, you know, literally expected had the expected goals. Exactly, yes. the expected goals. Now, look at this, and this this is so crazy. If you look at the ball possession, Chelsea possessed uh, the ball a bit more, 59%, Brighton possessed 41. 41%. Yet, Brighton used the ball more, more in terms of chances created. Aside the big chances missed, Brighton created more chances than Chelsea. Well, it tells you they were efficient on the day. They didn't dilly-dally with the ball. They knew exactly what to do in possession and out of possession. Mm -hmm. And for me, those are the telling influences you expect any top manager to have. These are the par kind of parameters you expect a top manager to have grips on. Exactly. Because it's about having a plan when you get to the final third. And anybody who watched that game, anyone who watched that game, he realized that Brighton had a blueprint that they were adapted to playing when they got into the final third. Unlike Chelsea, they kept a lot of the ball, but like you said, a lot of the times you didn't know what, what they, they were, were doing. doing. Yeah. You understand? So if you look at the X genes, um, it will tell you that the expected goal for Brighton was 1.94, the expected goals for Chelsea was 1.34. Yeah. So, so it tells you that Brighton were deadly prolific, very, very prolific. and very decisive. Very Their sense of judgment on point. For me, these are areas that Chelsea needs to address. And see, Graham Potter, honeymoon over. I do not know the kind of style Ted Bowley would want to run at Chelsea, but I think that if you are going to go by some of the things that have happened in the past. He needs to um, tighten his the, the, his the, groin. Their next two games, they play Arsenal, Arsenal and next, City. Next that's, Sunday, that's, that's, those, are those are difficult pictures before game. we go he for the World Cup exactly, break. That, those actually are the last games before you the, know, World Cup uh, break. the World Cup break. And you cannot be tinkering with the team consistently. Yes, it's good to read the game as it goes on, but at some point, you should know that, okay, I'll do this, I'll do that, and you are done. We, we've seen what Ten Hag has done. With exactly. United. We've seen the Played growth the of the same team, team. team this time is the and now, of, why again? The, the more you tinker with the team, the more the Destroying team loses. Tape. Yeah. Exactly, it's identity, and, and it looks disjointed. And clearly, when you come up against a very structured team like Brighton, they will expose you, and that's, you. That, that's what they did. Finally, do Chelsea still need a number nine, even with the acquisition of, you know, uh, Aubameyang? Because well, they are think, still struggling well, to well, score. Well, I, Kai Havertz, I mean, do they still need a number nine? 
Kyle Havertz is the best finisher in terms of who finishes chances at Chelsea. So you should play currently. Him as a nine? Well, I think football is about roles now. I think he's the guy who can get the job done on the biggest of stages. And the records speak for itself. But I mean, Aubameyang, Broja, I don't think they've, they've done their reputations any good. I think Chelsea need to go into the market, I've said that they need to go into the market, get a proper number. Now you have still spoken about the fact that they need a more reliable DM. I still think they need that facilitator, a creative hog. Cause, cause because I, today, like we've spoken like about, exactly. So, so, so Chelsea do need a number nine. A club like Chelsea deserves to have a proper number nine. I don't think Aubameyang is the way out. Anyway, so Kofi thinks Aubameyang, Aubameyang is not the way out. He believes the likes of Aubameyang and Broja are not the way out. They need a proper number nine. They need a facilitator in the middle. What do you think uh, this Chelsea team needs? Do they need to go into the market in January to bring in a number nine, a proper creative midfielder? I, again, we need your comments uh, in the comment section. Like our videos. Just make sure you subscribe to Sports 101. Let's get talking in the comment section. As always, this is Sports 101.